This is Insta360's all new X4 360 action camera. It's an 8K, 5.7K, 60 HDR, 4K. It's got a lot of specs, and we're gonna talk about them because that's what we do on YouTube. This video is sponsored by Insta360, so not a review, but it is a showcase of a product I really like a lot and have been using a lot for work, not just for this video. So, love you. Okay. Do you want to quit your pretending? Truth or false, the shit never ending. Hear me now and stop condescending. You see, I'm begging you, you be begging. If you seek for love, don't try to hide it. Find it deep inside and try to hide it. If there's a way, I want to know, try to quit your games and now that you deny it. So I have been lucky enough to be shooting with this for almost three weeks now, and I almost didn't get to. This actually arrived in the mail the day before I left on a multi-week content creation trip to the Maldives. Help me, Daddy! I got snakes chasing me! <laughs> and while packing for that trip, you know, I was bringing my FX3 as usual, but my main kit was the X3, my Go 3, and an Ace Pro. I had planned on shooting the majority of the videos I was making on Insta360 action cameras. So when this showed up in the mail, I was like, oh, heck yeah, this is gonna be perfect. And boy, was I right. It did everything I planned on having the X3 do, and then some. Comparing the X4 to the previous gen X3, it's a little bit bigger in all dimensions. It's a little bit taller, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, maybe it's not wider, I'm not quite sure, but it, it's a bigger camera. It's got a substantially bigger battery. The lenses are bigger, giving you also a bayonet mount as well for a new lens cover that we'll talk about in a little bit. A bigger screen. I don't know if processors get bigger, but the thing is faster and more responsive, so we're gonna say bigger processor. Other than that though, the button layout, the menus, all of that is pretty similar to the previous generation, albeit with some improvements actually in usability on the X4. Now, while it's physically larger, it's not really a selling feature, right? What's important is what's on the inside. The One X, the X2, and the X3 all shared a max resolution of 5.7K for that full 360 degree spherical image. The X4 now has given us what we've been asking for for quite a long time, which is 8K. So when you finally crop that into like a standard action field view, now we're getting something more similar to a standard 4K image, whereas in the past we're dealing with like 2K, 2.7K, maybe, once you're cropped in. Okay, I now have the X3 and the X4 both in their max resolution, so that's 5.7K on the X3, 8K on the X4. They're both in the standard picture profile with sharpness set to low, bitrate set to high, uh, locked at 2500th of a second shutter speed, ISO 100. And here as we crop in, hopefully you can see the difference in resolution and in detail that you get between those two cameras. If you've been following the marketing hype leading up to this camera's launch, they've been really pushing this 8K thing. And it's great, like I love having that crop ability, but it is not the most exciting feature for me about this camera. In fact, the most exciting part is 
still in 5.7K. So let's take these cameras over to a slightly less optimal lighting scenario and have a look at that. This is a slightly trickier lighting environment. I ran a handful of tests here and regardless of the settings that I had it in, the X3 was always blotchier and didn't have a nice smooth gradation between colors. It also always added a lot more digital sharpening, even though they both had the sharpness settings set identically. While 8K is the big marketing push here, that was probably the setting I found myself using the least because I knew that the videos I was making were going straight to Instagram. What that meant is I had the regular 5.7K that already looks better than it does on the X3, plus the added benefit of 60 frames, which gives us the flexibility to slow things down and speed things up and whip and pan, just truly the most versatile setup that I've ever had in a 360 camera. The X4 has updated versions of all these little accessories you're used to, so like the microphone adapter and the, the quick reader, which are totally cool and fun and kind of need updating for the new body, but they also have some new accessories that I am uh, uh, gonna need to use. For starters, they now have created premium lens guards. So rather than just the sticky lens guards, which you can still use on here, these are like a hard tempered glass that uses the bayonet mount on the X4 in order to like swap on, get really good image quality. And then when you end up inevitably smacking this into the ground or a tree or whatever, yeah, all right. Well, that's the take. <laughs> you're not ruining the lens itself, you're ruining a little piece of domed glass. They also came out with these cute little wind muffs that stick onto the sides and cover up the microphone ports so that if you really need to get the like scratch direct audio off of the camera, you can do that. I'm almost never relying on the audio from this except, uh, well, the intro of this video was straight out of camera. So sometimes I do. One big improvement that you're not gonna read on a spec sheet is just overall usability. So along with this bigger body, you get a bigger screen, but also the way they've laid out some of the menu stuff just works better. So switching between auto and manual exposure and adjusting some of those manual settings like your Kelvin white balance, everything just works better and it's faster and more responsive and that's very surprising to me because this is still like a prototype beta unit. It's like four times faster to record, to stop recording, to turn on, to turn off, to switch through settings. It's just a very responsive modern piece of camera tech. Good job. The camera still includes the features from the previous model. So things like bullet time that allow you to whip the camera around you in 360 slow motion to get these kind of interesting Michael Bay shots, as well as a me mode that gives you third person filming without the need for the full 360 degree image, but it still stitches out the selfie stick in the middle. And then other features have just been upgraded. So the photos it now shoots are like 72 megapixels. The single lens mode, if you just want to use it like a handheld action camera, is now shooting 4K 60p. That's a wide angle lens. And we still have voice and gesture control. So you can start and stop different modes of the camera based on what you do with your hands and your mouth. There are loads of other improvements as well, both to the camera and the post-processing software that I haven't had time to dive into. Things like an improved codec, a major overhaul to the editing software, higher resolution time lapses and bullet time modes. If you wanna find out those specifics, click the link down in the description because you'll find out a lot more there. I think a lot of people might still be wondering like, why shoot 360 in the first place? Why include all the headache of everything you don't want to see behind the camera, beside the camera? For me, I don't really like using 360 cameras as like a point and shoot vlog camera because I do find the workflow can get a little bit overwhelming. I think these cameras are at their best in two modes. One is when you have a specific idea in mind, a shot that would be so much harder to pull off if you had to manually pan and tilt your shot or zoom, all that kind of stuff. Uh, manually. One of my favorite ways to use these cameras is with a super long selfie stick. So Insta360 makes their extended selfie stick, but I have one called the F-Pole V that uh, at S-Dons 
makes and it's super rigid and very long. It's also pretty expensive. But by putting a 360 camera on the end of one of these giant arms, you can create incredible crane shots, drone-like shots, all sorts of shots that you just could not pull off with a mirrorless camera without a, a substantially larger budget. Now that I'm back from the trip and I've been digging through this mountain of footage we all shot, I'm realizing I actually wish I shot more in the 8K. The footage really is beautiful. When you have ample light and that sharpness turned down, it feels just more like a regular camera and less like a 360 camera with the crop turned onto it. And that I love. Like when you look at the intro to this video, it doesn't feel like oh, these are 360 shots, this is somebody else operating. Like most of those shots, the camera was just mounted onto the Skyjack here, with the exception of the opening shot where Zach had the big old F pole coming down to recreate somewhat of a crane shot. And all of those are shots that I do not have the equipment necessary to pull off with my FX3. I don't have the equipment necessary to do it with a drone or any action camera, really. Like, if I want those shots, the X4 is by far the best way to pull it off. So, I like it. If I were you, here's how I would set up the camera. I prefer the flat picture profile, which gives you more flexibility in post. I would set the sharpness to low, and I would use the 8K specifically for times when you know the kind of shot you're putting together. I think it works really well if you can control the lighting. And when you shoot like this, the file sizes aren't really going to be an issue because you're shooting in smaller chunks. When I would switch to the 5.7K 60 is when I don't really know what I'm going to want to do with this footage or if something kind of unexpected might happen that I might want to slow down a little bit. And then I would switch to the 5.7K 24 or 30 when the light starts getting lower because this is going to look a lot better than the 8K does in low light. Finally, the 4K 100 frames a second, I only really used in bright sunlight, so I don't know how it would look in other settings, but what a fun setting, especially when you put it on a big pole and get these sweeping slow motion shots where you can outrun a human. Just magic. Feels like magic. And for social media posting especially, the quality is plenty good enough. So that's it. That is the all-new Insta360 X4. It's like an X3, but better in all the ways that matter. Better image quality, better frame rates, better battery life, better screen. It's more responsive. It's a better camera. So there's a link down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Insta360, for partnering with me on this. I'm going to use this a lot. Are you invading my privacy?